800-951-0592. A quick look here at the markets. Uh, the Dow's down 100 points. Uh, the NAS, the, the s and P's down two. The NASDAQ's up 30. Uh, gold's up 8, 18.75. Silver's up uh, 12 cents at 22.36. And uh, crude oil uh, is, is up as well, uh, $76 for, that's for NYMEX. Uh, Brent crude, uh, as we talked about yesterday, Saudi Arabia raising prices. Brent crude's at $82.50. Uh, this market recap brought to you by our friends at Y Refi. Uh, you've heard Jason and I have been talking about them here for the last couple of months. Uh, great annualized rates of return. It's all guaranteed. You, no guessing. You don't have to worry about is Jay Powell going to say something crazy today? Is he going to say something the markets don't like? Is he going to be too bullish? Is he going to be too bearish? It doesn't matter where where the rates are going. Are, are we going into a soft landing, a hard landing? Is the house of cards going to completely collapse? You're locked in up to 10.25% returns. Here's the catch. So we got to have 50 grand. Great news now. You can use an existing IRA to do it. Check them out, investyrefi.com. That's the word invest, the letter Y-R-E-F-Y.com. Or just call them, 888-Y-REFI-24. Uh, and they'll they'll walk you through the, the whole process. And Jason, I'm going to tell you, it, it really is uh, interesting as we're starting to see some numbers come in. Trade deficit, almost a trillion dollars. A new all-time record deficit with China. So think about this: China about six hundred billion dollars uh, in deficit. You know they're they're the the lion's share of this thing. Now, here's the good news, I guess. Uh, when we looked at the Chinese trade deficit numbers, six hundred and ninety billion dollars of total merchandise trade. Uh, between us in China, that just merchandise. Uh, but we did get we get some banking stuff because so everyone knows. Let's remind people, Jason, about what NAFTA and GATT were really all about. Remember those free trade agreements with the what was that started? The talk started with Bush Senior, uh, really got rolling uh, with Bill Clinton. Uh, and remember, they even had, think about how good the spin is. They even had union reps going on CNBC and going on TV and telling everybody, man, this is a great deal. The Chinese, and they need microwaves and blenders and cars and computers. And uh, yeah, it's going to be great. Of course. Then they finally figured out, oh, wait, you're not going to build that stuff here? Matter of fact, wait, I'm losing my job so it can be built over there. Well, let me tell you what the trade-off was. Listen, this was all set up by bankers. They wanted to give Chinese credit cards. They wanted access to Chinese debt markets. And they've gotten it. And, and to give you an example when you factor in all of it, all of the trade, uh, it comes in at 680, or I'm sorry, $383 billion. So we did get our banks got about $300 billion worth of fees, I guess, Jason. Uh, but but that's the, that was the trade that we made. I mean, most people don't remember it. They want you to forget it. They don't want you to know what it really was all about. Right, Joe. And, and what, what happened is, is uh, these union heads that you're talking about, they, they, they voted for, they were big on it because, because they're in a little corner of the world, their, their company was going to say, Hey, we're going to, we're going to have all this business. But what, what always happens, what, you know, it's, this is the thing they did. We don't talk about enough is, well, the big company comes in, Hey, we're going to buy you out and this will even be better for you. Cause you know, you, there's, you guys got some, some bills that you can't pay or whatever that, whatever the situation is. The big company comes in, takes over the small company, and they go to China. And so then the unions, you know, hey, we had a great situation, and they blame the big company for buying them out instead of blaming themselves for voting in and pushing stuff that destroyed their company, Joe. So it's, 
you know, and, and the debt, you know, the, you know, the, the interest on the debt, Joe, uh, it's interesting how the, the Fed's supposed to be tapering off, right? And they're supposed to be selling off their balance sheet. And I don't think they're selling any treasuries. I, I think that's zero. I think what's happening is the only treasuries that are coming off their balance sheet are the ones that are maturing. So just as you said, the the low interest, the 0% interest rate stuff that they bought 10 years ago, eight years ago, five years ago, that's coming off their sheets. All the, all the heavier interest stuff that's being added on or uh, that they have to buy up or, you know, because it's always a buy and sell situation. That's all that's left on their sheets, Joe. So it's... This debt's going to get worse. That 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 record uh, interest payments on the debt that's going to keep going up, and uh, everything else. Just, it's, you got you got a nice one rolling today. There's a, the, the, all these things are just a, a continuous, constant situation of America's uh, giving away what we had, which was uh, global dominance and in, in the economy for better or for worse. America had after World War II, Joe. It's just been slowly eroded. And and when we look at uh, so we understand the trade deficit. Right, almost a trill just missed a trillion dollars this year. Trillion That's dollars. Gone. Interest on the debt, we just hit a new high point. Eight hundred and fifty billion. By the way, uh Mike Shedlock, uh, he does great work. He's the one uh, uh, that provided uh the 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 update here. Eight hundred and fifty billion dollars in interest alone. Uh and and looks like 2023, 2024, it'll be close. Depending on how high rates go, uh, we're going to spend over a trillion dollars in in, just in interest uh, on this debt. And here's the problem. The problem is it's not like the debt's getting smaller while we're spending this. This this is like uh, you're paying, you're not even paying the minimum balance on the credit card. Right, you're 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 paying the minimum, but you're you're the 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 amount you owe keeps going up, right? You know that that's the problem, right? They 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 think that this is an unlimited credit card, Jason, and the answer, quite frankly, is uh, it is unlimited. The problem is that the standard of living collapses as that minimum payment continues to 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 be consume more and more and more of our tax base. I mean, think about this right now. We're approaching about 25% of all tax collection is now going to the interest on the debt. The problem is the debt going to be growing by another two to three trillion dollars a year on top of what it is that we're already short. Yeah, Joe, interest, paying interest, I mean, it's a bad thing. Being in debt's a bad thing. However, uh, getting a loan is not a bad thing. It's, you know, it's just the facts of life. You can't just buy a house cash. People just can't just put the money together. How many years would it take for you to, to, to just save it all up and then buy it? You'd be you know, in retirement age for most people or very old. But interest, people don't understand how debt erodes your ability for your future to be bright. Um, if you have a mortgage, and these houses are huge now. These, these mortgages are massive. And if you have like a four hundred thousand dollar mortgage or a three hundred thousand dollar mortgage somewhere in the middle there, you know, very likely uh, even if you had a good interest rate, the old interest rates before the, before everything went up last year, you could be paying like nine hundred dollars of interest on your loan. You know, it could be a thousand, could be eleven hundred dollars of interest, but at nine hundred dollars, that's ten thousand dollars a year if you're at the beginning of your loan. In five years, you'll have put fifty thousand dollars into the bank's hands for the privilege of borrowing the money to get a house. Uh, when Joe's get bringing the numbers about the interest being paid on the federal debt that we have, a trillion dollars is where we're headed per year. Joe, I mean, it, it, I mean, what are they even bringing in in taxes? I mean, they're only bringing in like a little over a trillion dollars, or two trillion, three trillion dollars. No, in, in but taxes, well, right? all taxes. God, well, yeah, it depends on how you cl- clarify. So let's the, the government will tell you they bring in four point five trillion dollars in taxes, uh, which is true, but the biggest piece of that is is your payroll tax fica right that's social security medicare so that that money comes in and goes right back out right i mean that 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 essentially uh is already right medicare uh social security we're already spending more uh going out than it's coming in and we're you know got that fake surplus thing that we'll do a, a different show on but when you really think about you you throw that out you're really at that point where it's almost, I mean, we're getting really, really close 
to excluding uh, FICA, payroll tax. It's like for every $2 that comes in, $1 is going to interest. And, and the problem is over the next, now again, think about this. The problem really magnifies over the next 10 years, especially if we don't go back to zero. If interest rates have to stay high, and I'm going to tell you right now, there's a big article out about 10 years of stagflation is probably what we need uh, to get used to because a lot of this debt, the, the two-year, the five-year, the seven-year, the 10-year notes, most of that was bought at an interest rate of less than 1%. Right in the case of a two-year note, heck, the two-year note for a while, it, it was down to like three-tenths of a percent, right? I mean, 10-year note got a low of like half of a percent there for a minute. Now you got, not only do you got to redo it, now all of a sudden imagine having to redo it at 4%, 5%, 6%. This is, that, that, that is uh, like catastrophic in terms of how much more it cost us when we did all this bar, and like I said, Janet Yellen was out there screaming from the rooftops to go big. Let's just borrow it while it's all cheap. Nobody wanted to worry. Hey, we'll worry about when it gets more expensive later because, Jason, they have no intentions of paying this off. And I think this is why you're going to see this digital currency. Well, and, and Joe, if we get into a, a more logical interest rate, which is, you know, we're around 5% now, right? The Fed's raised around 5%. Uh, if, they're, if they're having this reset the table, so to speak, economically, uh, you can't have 0%. That's that's not logical. So if you have all this, you know, the, the trillions of dollars that the Fed's holding and, and all this debt is in this low interest, because all this debt, most of it, Joe, is being held since 2008. It's all that 10-year stuff. It's it's all the low 0% interest, all those Obama years, all that 0% interest debt that they bought. Uh, no one's going to buy that if if they can buy treasuries at you know at the new Fed rate of five percent. So they have to let all that stuff expire off the books. This is why we could have ten years, Joe, of the markets down off their highs, and 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 it slowly you have to get into that higher interest rate, all the treasuries, so that you can buy and sell that stuff, Joe. Because right, I'm really who's going to buy the Fed's zero percent interest treasuries, right? I wouldn't want that. I mean, would you, you? You really got to put all the pieces together. You know, we started out with the trade deficit number. Listen, that allowed uh, for the Fed and the government, our government, we went on a big debt run, right? We had some fake surpluses in those first those first few years of debt and gap. We had some fake Clinton surpluses, and then all of a sudden the debt just, just goes crazy, right? But we were able to what? Get some cheaper stuff. Right. We had, you know, I, 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 we had uh, periods where, remember, the Fed was kept saying for years, oh, we just can't get the 2% inflation. You know, it's, inflation's too low. And now, now fast forward, you know, Jason, we talked about China. Listen, the China, I, granted, they don't make anywhere close to what we make, but they're making decent money. You know, they're making decent money. Stuff, stuff is now more expensive. The, that, that, that era of cheapness is gone. And then you throw ridiculous monetary policy by our central bank. Listen, zero interest rates for 15 years. That was absolute asinine policy. And look at what they did. Just go pull up a chart of the debt. 2005, the debt was what, five? Five trillion? Six trillion? Right now we're at 40. Between the Fed's balance sheet and what we got at the government, we're at 40, and we did all of that at zero. And guess what? Now it's time to pay, right? The interest, the interest is coming due, and that's going to be a big problem. Patriot Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Patriot Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason. A uh, final day of twenty dollar gold pieces at two thousand ninety five. Uh, right now, gold's up a dozen. Um, probably be twenty one fifty tomorrow. That's my guess. If it was here, uh, just remember, 
I'm expecting the Jay Powell that we got on Wednesday. So now it's Tuesday. We did get that crazy jobs report on Friday, but gold before that jobs report, it was $1,960 before that jobs report came out. We could, we could, it's possible, very possible that we can see gold move pretty strongly uh, when Jay Powell starts talking. If we get the same Jay Powell, Jason, that we had on Wednesday, put these 20s away. This is, it, it really is an incredible opportunity at 800 951 uh, Silver up 13 cents right now. And Jason, we talked about the probability of stagflation. Uh, we, we've also talked about, okay, we're starting just now to see the ramifications of all the borrowing we did at 0%. Right when we know they didn't borrow at zero, but close to zero, all of that gets rolled over. The vast majority of U.S. debts, when we look at that forty trillion, not all of it is due every year, but the vast majority of it is due in the next ten years. The vast majority, and and so every year we go. Right. It, it just takes that interest payment and you just start adding. And unfortunately for us, at the size we're talking about, you're adding hundreds of billions of dollars a year, hundreds of billions. And, and, and in this case here, we could see a year where all of a sudden it's four or five hundred billion dollars in added interest payments, Jason. Yeah, that's right. And and uh, so some of this debt has probably got some interest on it. I mean, some of this is this 30 year debt that might have been bought even before 2008. So some of that stuff's probably, probably hold countries probably holding on to that uh, ever since we got into the zero percent range. Uh, but imagine uh, the, the trillion or so that uh, China is holding and the almost trillion uh, or so that Japan is holding. Well, how much of that is zero uh, the, from the zero percent days? Right, Joe? And I don't that, think a lot of that's 30 years. Yeah, some, some they're going to hold, they don't buy a lot of 30 year, right? When, when it's foreign governance, they're, they're usually holding two years and less. Why? Because they're holding it to buy stuff later, right? They, you know, they, this is how little trust they have. They don't leave the money in the bank, right? <laughs> we're not leaving that money in the bank. No way, right? We're going to go buy a treasury note and we'll, we'll spend it later. That's why I said the vast majority really, uh, you know, like on a yearly number, I'll have to look it up. But about a little, probably a little more than twenty-five percent of the debt has to be paid every year. So it's a big piece. It's a big number. Uh, and then yeah, you yeah, know we and, start talking. Well, I was, I was just going to say. I mean, and you're right, and, and Joe's right. They, they, you hold the short-term stuff because it's more liquid. It's you can move it faster, or it can come off your books if no one's buying it. But Joe. Makes me wonder at back in 2008 when we ran that Glenn Beck piece, you know, that, that, that it wasn't five trillion, it was 29 trillion. And they gave all this money out to these other countries. And what, what kind of promises did those countries have to make, you know, with that money they were giving up, right? To keep everything floating, right? You know, they gave, uh, yeah, the how much did they the give? Behind three, the scenes, three trillion. Money. To, yep, three right. trillion to Japan, Joe. How, I wonder how many treasuries they had to buy to get that little bailout. Well, you know, the, the interesting right? thing too now. Uh, in looking at banks, so we just got these these numbers just came out about loans. And this is something, uh, you know, we talked yesterday, I shared my experience at, at a big housing development. And and uh, the, the one local home builder that was in there was saying, man, we're just trying not to lay people off. Today, Ford said the exact same thing. Hey, we haven't announced mass layoffs yet, but it doesn't look like we can't go at this rate. The sales pace at this rate, the ax is going to have to start swinging soon. Dell laid off 6,500. Now, now we look at loans because that's, you know, let's face it. Our economy is driven by debt, right? We know this by loans. What are the banks saying? And here's what they're saying. Lending standards continue to get much tighter. So the bank's now a lot less willing to loan to those marginals. In, inside of the report, not a single bank 
is forecasting a 20% or less chance of recession. None. All the banks right now in their base models are saying 40 to 80% chance of recession, which means stop loaning to marginal people. In other words, we're only going to loan money to people that really kind of don't need a loan. And then, of course, right with that, Bloomberg reporting that loan demand has fallen off a cliff. That's not a good sign, right, Jason? That just means more slowing is coming. It runs contrary to that jobs number from Friday, but it's another one of these, you know, another one of these pieces to the puzzle that says things may start slowing down quicker than people think. Yeah, you know, when people are running out of money, you would think that there'd be a loan demand rising. But I think with uh, loan demand crashing, if that's if that's true, Joe, then uh, I think that just shows that everybody is already uh, loaded up to the hilt with their debt, right? Hey, I can't even yeah, well, get on a loan. Yeah, well, this is the bank saying. Yeah, the bank saying no, no, no. You're maxed out. Now, where yep, there's, maxed there's out. no, yeah, there's no increase. Hey, can I get a higher line? Can you increase my line? Can you raise my 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 limit on my credit card? And here's what the banks are saying: Nope, nope, because we don't like what we're seeing, and and it's going to be one of these factors that uh, that I think why we're going to get a dovish Jay Powell because he's seeing these numbers and saying, okay. That's not good. Things are slowing down and, and it doesn't take long, right? I mean, you know, all of a sudden uh, people start, uh, stop getting mortgages. People stop getting auto loans. People don't get increased lines of credit. They don't get increased credit card limits. Jason, the spending stops pretty fast. Yeah, I think for a lot of people, the spending stopped last year, you know, and now they're just trying to float. I think there's a lot of people just, just trying to float. And I think uh, we, we've been talking about the jobs numbers being kind of a weird situation, Joe, where I think, you know, if you get two jobs, you lose one, you're not, you're not unemployed. And so, so I think there's a lot of shifting and moving and, and, and people just trying to float right now. And what happens is, is eventually it gets bad enough, especially when you have inflation uh, added on to all the other economic problems. Uh, people stop floating, Joe. They just, they just crash. They just, you know, and when they can't pay for stuff, nobody else gets to pay for the banks can't pay for stuff. They can't collect on their loans. Right, Joe. Banks also reported in Q4 the lowest demand for housing loans since they've been tracking it. Uh, that's a big one as well. Patriot Radio News Hour, pick up those 20s. We'll be back after the break. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Joe and Jason, Patriot Radio News Hour. Uh, $20 gold piece is 2095 This is it. Today is the last day. A big increase in price uh, coming as gold continues to rebound from, from Friday. And we're anticipating more dovish talk. I mean, Kashkari's probably, and I, I don't think he's a voting member this, this year. Uh, he, he's saying 75 basis points is all that's left. A lot of the Fed governors are saying, hey, there's one hike left. There's a couple saying no hikes left. Let's just say, Jason, we're between one and three rate hikes and all the garden 25 basis point variety hikes from being done. The, the issue is, unfortunately for us, is I think what they're saying is, listen, we're, we're setting ourselves up for a lot of years of stagflationary times and, and a lot of it having to do, Jason, with the fact that we went, really, when you think about it, I mean, after 9-11, Greenspan brought the rates down to 1% for about a year. Uh, then we we got up to about 5% and then it went zero. I mean, we, we, we've essentially are wrapping up almost 25 years of ridiculousness and the amount of money we borrowed, and and the interest rate, and of course they said it was okay because the interest was so cheap. The problem would be, well, that would be great if you were getting ready to pay it off, right? If, if, if okay, interest rates are rising, let's start paying this thing off. Uh uh, 
right? Now we're talking about, hey, not only are we not paying it off, the interest alone is just adding to the debt. I mean, think about it. We could see a situation in 2023 where interest payments alone add another half a trillion dollars on top of a debt that's already a couple trillion dollars. Yeah, yeah, Joey. The higher the debt goes, the more interest you pay. That's just it's simple mathematics, and uh, so so we'll uh, we'll keep watching because you know you know Biden's still president, so he might want to just go spend another one and a half trillion. <laughs> just keep piling it on, you know, because hey, uh, hey, the debt ceiling, the debt ceiling, what's that, right? Yeah, it's it's just it's just an obstacle that needs to be removed, right? So you know, it, it, the Ponzi scheme will go as long as people keep having faith in it, Joe, that they, they see a hundred dollar bill and they keep thinking that this is a great thing to have in your hand. And uh, when they convince us of uh, or convince the average American of of this digital currency being the new great thing, uh, people keep, you know, to keep having faith because because the Federal Reserve System is is the most successful religion in human history. It's it's based on faith. And it's look how big it is. It's it's these numbers, Joe, are, are just it's just made up nonsense and people just keep feeding the system. They keep having faith in what this is and, and, and the cracks are happening, right? Just, it's just, it's, to tell you the truth, the whole, this whole century so far is, is showing cracks, cracks, cracks. It's, it's almost like a huge slow motion crash of the entire system, Joe. It just never quite goes, does it? It's always just cracking and cracking. And it just feels like we're getting really close to a huge reset that they're out loud speaking about, Joe. Well, and again, you can't bring interest rates back to zero when you have inflation running or can't. Well, they could, right? They could. They could. I they mean, won't. let's face it. <laughs> they went a whole year, a whole year longer at zero, right? Because they were trying to convince you it was transitory. Now they're trying to tell you it's disinflation and, and all these other nonsensical terms. Listen, when you're still creating trillions of dollars out of thin air, Jason, that's inflation. That's period. It's, you know, the pricing follows after that. Yeah, I, I, the rates aren't going to go down for a while. And if they do yeah. try it, they may try it sometime next year. But I I don't see them going to zero. And and I think that the next trick will be keeping the rates at a certain level above zero, two, three percent, four percent, whatever, whatever it is, and printing. I think they'll have quantitative easing uh, with higher interest ratio. That's and just think what that's going to do to the interest on the debt. <laughs> Joe, right? Start printing and, and leave the interest rate to three, right? What was that? What is that, what is that interest uh, payments going to be then? Uh, yeah, I mean, again, what, what else do you do? And again, this is why, you know, today the UK Central Bank, yeah, we got to have a digital currency, right? They're setting us up. Understand that it's not like we're just switching over, right? I know that's what they want you to believe. Oh, don't worry. Hey, and a lot of you out there, uh, don't you don't have any money anyway. You, you Everything you do is on, on a car, right? Very rarely, you know, if, if you have cash in your wallet, you're lucky if you got like 20 bucks, Right? You know, a lot of people out there like that's uh, what man. I got forty dollars in my wallet. Wow, I, I heard that's a lot to have in there because I just use my card. And they think that going to the digital is just hey, the the okay. So I won't have forty dollars in my wallet anymore. But it'll work. No, that's not what we're talking about. Listen, there's a reset that comes with that. That's why I keep telling you. Quit being a damn idiot and leaving all that money in the bank. You're just asking for them to steal it from you, Jay Jason. I mean, it's just that simple. Yeah, I saw a big, big indication of the digital money system coming in just yesterday. Uh, I went to uh, late lunch, early dinner with 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 Jack and my my wife. And we went to pick up a few groceries at at, at a King Supers we don't normally go to. Uh, one of the bigger, newer ones, and they have the entrance and the exit caged in now. You come in, Joe. And you have to go through the gates, you know, kind of like Walmart's that have these at Walmart's. But yeah, but but now the, there's like a there's like the fence that goes around. You're in a cage. And you have to, the, the doors open. You walk through, right? And then when you leave, you have to go through the cage to get out, right? Joe's kind of getting ready for having no uh, no cashier anymore, right? You know, the, the whole uh, well, yeah. You click your click your card to get in, and then uh, everything is chipped, and it'll just read your chips as you walk out the door. And it's funny, Joe, how we have this this bag fee and. All the getting rid of bags. Walmart in our state just got rid of all the bags completely. Well, you bring your own bags in. Now you, now you don't, you know, they, you don't, you don't, they don't have the expense of the bags and, and that whole that whole checkout situation, Joe. 
Sure sounds, sure feels like King Supers and Walmart's here in Colorado are getting ready for that digital money, Joe. 800 951 Patriot Radio News Hour, final segment coming up. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two twenty dollar gold. I can't. Hey, I've done all I can. If you're not smart enough uh, to take advantage, uh, that's on you. Uh, gold's going a lot higher. Two thousand ninety five dollars at eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. And Jason uh, just just hitting uh, Mannheim. Uh, they 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 track used vehicle prices. Right, used vehicle prices dropping like a stone. Not anymore. Used vehicle prices jumped two and a half percent from December to January, saying a spike in demand because nobody can afford to buy a new car. Uh, get ready, Ford, uh, saying that they're they're talking about laying off twenty five percent of their engineers. Get ready, uh, and then how about this? Last week we had one of the largest egg farms in the United States catch on fire and 100,000 birds burnt to death. Uh, New Zealand, their largest egg farm, 75,000 hens caught on fire and they all burned. I mean, does this happen like on the regular? You know, Joe, it's it's perplexing. I mean, uh, we, we reported it, I think it was is, last is it year, me? all of those. All those places that burned down, Joe. I, I, how how come suddenly all these places are burning down to the ground and having weird accidents and planes crashing into buildings? You know, it's it's, it's another one of those things. We we have economic stress all over the place, and then you have all the weird stuff, right? You add the weird stuff that never happened before happening now, right? It's it's it definitely feels like uh, obviously a, a a a purposeful event being perpetuated against the citizens. We're being moved, Joe, and there's nothing we can do about it, right? You know, hey, don't pump any oil, right, Joe? Because that wouldn't help the oil price. We don't, we don't need the gas prices to be lower, right? So, of course, we're not going to pump oil, right? Yeah, and it, I don't know. It's just weird. I mean, uh, you know, bird flu is one thing, but I, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't follow it enough, but it just seems like in the last year, year and a half, uh, th- this incredible amount of food processing, and it doesn't matter from, from salads to chickens, it's, it's, everything's catching on fire and 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 blowing up and, and just weird stuff and and, and again I, I don't i don't know how it works but it just seems like uh how, how do you lose a hundred thousand hands in one fire and this one there's seventy five thousand in one fire and and, you, and you're not talking about and apparently that's a pretty big operation i mean i i don't know but the, that was the largest in new zealand i know the one in connecticut was one of the largest here in the u.s the news is is bought and paid for. The, the mass media is just a, a small handful of companies. So whatever they want you to see is what you will see. So, Joe, I mean, why do I get the feeling we've had balloons flying over us for years and years and, and somebody's taking pictures of these balloons and then nobody, nobody puts on the news and suddenly now you know, they have to term it the, the Chinese spy balloons immediately cast eyes as this huge thing we should look, be looking up at and being afraid of. I think about it. How crazy is this stuff, Joe? So suddenly a, a, so, a balloon with some satellite attached to it is, is flying above, and, and that's got to be the biggest news story that everyone should be looking at. Every single thing, but, though, is just, is just being led in some direction. You know, the, the great way to do EMP attacks, uh, right? Gathering information. Uh, the, I just saw a, a thing where China's now got more ICBM launchers than we do. I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, NORAD now is saying, well... Yeah, we didn't tell anybody, but yeah, uh, after the fact, uh, these balloons may have been in U.S. airspace uh, previously, but we deemed them not to be a threat, so we didn't tell anybody. That's kind of the new line. Well, well, well what is it? <laughs> I think more pictures are coming out from uh, maybe 10 or 5 years ago, Joe, and now they have to explain, well, what about all these other pictures that are popping up, right? <laughs> Listen... <laughs> Uh oh! Don't take any chances. <laughs> Get that gold put away. Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Jason and I were coming right back with the half empty cup. <laughs> 